So the fourth disease that you will not see, the fourth uh, liver disease that you won't see except in pregnancy is acute fatty liver pregnancy or AFLP. And this is uh, seen in about 1 in 13,000 deliveries. And uh, a typical patient may have two weeks of uh, nausea and vomiting. So it's kind of nonspecific and fatigue. And they come in and the fetus may be sick too. So you remember you've got two patients and as soon as the patient gets in the hospital you've got to put them on the monitor and make sure the baby's okay. Because the baby can die while you're working the mother up to try to get a diagnosis. About 50% of the patients with acute fatty liver have preeclampsia. So they have hypertension, edema, proteinuria. But uh, it's a distinct disease. It's not just preeclampsia. It may be that the, they have a disease and that preeclampsia is a stress and brings it out, but but uh, it's not just preeclampsia. They have true hepatic failure. And uh, the main manifestations of that are hypoglycemia, which I would define as a blood sugar less than uh, 60, uh, coagulopathy, so a prolonged proton PTT, they can have an encephalopathy, they can have multiple system organ failure, and in the lab you'll see AST liver enzymes, AST greater than 100 but less than 1,000. You'll have a bilirubin usually less than 5 but you have a prolonged proton PTT a decreased fibrinogen you may have elevated ammonia level and you may have low platelets. So the cause of AFLP is unclear. It resembles uh, Rye syndrome, which is, you know, what fatty liver that kids get if you give them aspirin. Jamaican vomiting sickness. If somebody eats a ackee fruit and gets a fatty fatty liver, fatty replacement of the liver, and then pregnancy can cause a fatty liver. Now, several years ago, this idea of the LCHAD deficiency was brought up. So long chain acyl-CoA dehydrogenase is an uh, enzyme involved in fatty acid oxidation. And so if you look at the babies of mothers with AFLP, they'll often have this uh, LCHAD deficiency. Uh, and it's probably the only condition I can think of where an inherited uh, inborn error of metabolism in the fetus makes the mother sick. So disease in the baby makes the mother sick. It turns out that when you screen all patients, uh, infants of, of women with AFLP, a lot of them don't have LCHAD deficiency. So this is only part of the explanation of this disease. But there's a subset of AFLP where the baby does have this uh, long chain acyl-CoA dehydrogenase deficiency. Now, if you do a liver biopsy in patients with acute fatty liver.
they have acute uh, microvesicular fatty infiltration. And you can uh, see this with a frozen section with oil red O or with uh, glutaraldehyde preparation in, in electron microscopy. So they have the hepatic uh, architecture is preserved and the re cytoplasm is re replaced by a microvesicular fat. Now this is seen on liver biopsy, but uh, liver biopsy is rarely done. And the problem is that while well, the patient's acutely ill, you can't biopsy the liver because of the coagulopathy. And when they get well, and you could biopsy them, you don't because you don't have anything to give the patient in exchange for the piece of liver. So we usually don't really lock the door on the diagnosis with a liver biopsy and an AFLP. So typically what you see is hepatic failure at term with preeclampsia and hypoglycemia, so blood sugar less than 60. And you're thinking this is either the worst case of preeclampsia I've ever seen or, or it's acute fatty liver pregnancy. And the main point is that you don't have to know uh, which it is because the treatment is the same for both. You stabilize and deliver. Things that we can look at besides the uh, lab is uh, an ultrasound of the liver or a CT scan of the liver. And that may be helpful, but... Uh, The main point is that uh, a normal CT does not rule out fatty liver pregnancy. In other words, you could have, uh, typically you'll see hypodensity that improves uh, after you deliver the patient, and you could do a CT scan now, and then three weeks later, and you'll see a, a resolution of the fat in the liver. But uh, sometimes the, the CT is, is normal in these patients. So as far as mon uh, um, uh, managing uh, AFLP, remember I told you you got to monitor the fetus and make sure the fetus is okay, and uh, stabilize and deliver. And uh, you can deliver vaginally. In other words, you think, well, I don't have time to deliver it vaginally, but a lot of times you can deliver vaginally or C-section uh, if uh, failed induction and then uh, supportive care in the ICU. I mean if you do primary section if without labor if, if, the, if the baby has a suspicious tracing or bad tracing uh, without trying to deliver bad. So it, it just depends on how much time you think you've got. So supportive care in the ICU can be a big deal. They can be in the ICU for several weeks. And the problems that you'll see are uh, they may have diabetes insipidus because they'll have increased uh, vasopressinase because the liver's not metabolizing, metabolizing it. Uh, they can have... Uh, coagulopathy for weeks and you have to give them fresh frozen plasma and pack cells uh, to support them until the liver hepatic synthesis starts going again. And they may have uh, coma, so they can have hepatic coma, they can have ARDS and be on the ventilator. So it, uh, it can be sort of uh, two or three weeks of, uh, of supportive care. They'll often require uh, D50, D50 to uh, to keep their blood sugar up. Bolus is a D50, um, or an infusion of uh, D10 or D20 to keep their blood sugar up. Thank you.